a lot of the people that watch these videos are either ham operators or electronics hobbyists and I think uh, most of us have in common we like to salvage electronics from old equipment and there's nothing wrong with that but you have to ha test the parts before you use them in a circuit and there does seem to be a problem with counterfeit parts nowadays too so anyway once you start collecting these parts they all have to be tested especially the solid state devices you need to test them before either use them in a circuit or uh, use them to repair another piece of equipment and of course uh, one of the easiest ways to test them is use a simple DVM that has a diode test function on it. Here's four transistors that represent devices similar to what you would salvage off of old circuit boards. The first one is a 2N2222. It's a NPN transistor. I think I use these more than any other transistors. They're pretty versatile. So how do you test one of those? Well with a meter that has the diode function, you can see the diode symbol, it's fairly easy since it's an NPN you put the positive lead on the base and you go to the emitter you should get a diode junction which I do and you go to the collector junction and I get 665 millivolts which is a standard VBE drop, base emitter voltage drop. Now if I put the negative lead on the base and I go to the collector and emitter I should get infinite I shouldn't get any voltage and that's okay with a meter second transistor here is a 2SC388A it's an NPN silicon these are used in um, for instance IF amplifiers in receivers so if I place the positive lead on the base and go to the collector I should get a diode drop. In this case it's 763 millivolts and if I go to the emitter I also get a diode drop. And there then again going from the from the base negative lead on the base I should get infinite or high resistance to the emitter and collector. The third transistor here is a 2N3053. This is also an NPN silicon. This was harvested out of a piece of equipment some at some time. And um, the leads are short because of that, so I had to put some little jumpers here. But same thing here if you go from the base to the emitter or the collector to the base you forward bias the junctions and you'll get a voltage reading likewise going base to emitter base to collector you get a high high resistance reading and the fourth one here this is a 2N3638 this is actually a PNP transistor it's a high speed switch and in this one the base is in the center and since it's PNP the negative lead of the DVM goes to the base and then going from the collector to the base you get a diode junction and to the emitter you get a diode junction and in the opposite polarity you should get a high resistance there are other options out there for testing devices what's popular now are these component testers you can buy on the internet they're fairly inexpensive they have a zero insertion force socket here but I mounted this one in a little wooden case and put some banana connectors on it and then I made a transistor took a transistor socket and a ballpoint pen body and I put leads on it and I can plug in a transistor and these are kinda nice because they give you a little more information Bipolar junction transistor PNP, a beta of 97, and the junction volt is 703 millivolts, and it actually gives you the pinouts of the transistor also. So that gives you a little more information than the DVM, which is nice. 
But there's one drawback with these two methods, the DVM or this transistor tester, component tester. They only test up to, in this case, there's a 9 volt battery, and in this case, 9 volt battery. So they're not going to test the devices up to their maximum operating parameters. For instance, if you have a high voltage transistor that could have a collector voltage in the hundreds of volts, there's no way you're going to know. It could have a leakage voltage, so it could test positive in one of these devices, but it would fail the breakdown test on another device. So, next we'll look at a few other devices for testing solid state components, and that'll come up next. Here are three more devices that can be used to test semiconductors. These are older. Some of these go back a few years, but they're still pretty viable instruments. First one here is the B&K 530 semiconductor tester. And behind that is the ICO 685 transistor analyzer. And next to that on the right side is the Sencor TF151A transistor FET tester. So, um, of course, these are analog. They have analog movements on the meters here. This is a, an interesting one here, and it has a, a feature I really like. This, um, this control here, I have a 2N2222A plugged into this socket, which is an NPN transistor. So to see what the basing is on it, you can look in a data sheet, or if you want, if you look at these B, uh, banana connectors here, there's a blue, a green, and a yellow. And up in this window, there's a blue, a green, and a yellow triangle that represent collector, emitter, and base. And what you do, you move this lever up until this light comes on. It'll tell you if it's a PNP. Well, it's an NPN. Anyway, you push this lever, and as you can see, it's changing the basing configuration here. And when it, when it connects to the actual base collector and emitter of that transistor, this LED will come on. Okay, there it came on, there it's off. So this is telling me the collector is yellow, which is 3. The base is green, which is 2. And the emitter is blue. So I can tell what the base of that is. And there's a switch here to, for either PNP or NPN. So now to test the beta, it's got a switch here that you can turn. This is a low power device. So when I test the beta, the analog meter will read. And here it reads, oh, about 275, 280. It also has a um, leakage test here. And you can test for leakage current here which there is no leakage that we can measure anyway with this with this particular equipment so this is a pretty handy handy device to have you can plug in uh, leads here to connect to your device or you can use a socket here and uh, this tells you a lot more about your device it even will tell you the upper frequency limit you've got a range here that you can test the devices here I used this one for many years. Um, this is pretty handy, but now there's better devices than this to use. Here's the ICO 685. I've got the same transistor connected up with a leads emitter base and collector. And this one's a little more involved to set up. It's a bipolar junction transistor. It's a NPN transistor, bipolar, I got the switches set here. And on this one you have to calibrate for the beta. There's a knob here on the right you can control. What you do is you set the needle on the beta calibrate. And then I have the range switch on beta times 10. So when I push read beta, the meter goes to the right and uh, this is a little closer to 300, a beta 300, which I read, what, 275 on the other end. So at this, this part of the range, the um, graduations are pretty close together, but you get the idea. 
you can also measure the collector base leakage on this device and to do that you go over to the right ICBO collector base leakage and you can read the leakage current in microamps on the scale here so there's no appreciable that you can read anyone on this leakage so this transistor shows good also look the beta is off a little bit this was a ham fest buy again so and I haven't gone through the calibration of it I really don't use it that much um, so what I'll probably do is use my curve tracers and calibrate it against that but anyway this is another device you can use to test Bipolars, FETs, SCRs, Zener diodes, anything like that you can test with this device. This is final tester here is the Sencor TF151A transistor FET tester. This was uh, made by Sencor a number of years ago. They made a lot of test equipment for service technicians, you know, TV, radio repairman. In fact, the unit here comes with a, a handy reference book with uh, data for different transistors. A lot of obsolete ones in there. This one works a lot like the ICO one. Pretty similar. Um, you have to calibrate it. Right now I'm measuring the same transistor, the 2N22A. So I have it on it's low power. I have to set the beta cal for zero with this knob. And then I can test for beta on the lower on the top scale the lower end times 10 so multiply times 10 you can also test for uh, collector base leakage current on this device it's pretty handy basically zero zero leak which read on the bottom here so this is a pretty handy device you know guys could take this out in the field with them so that's another device you can use to test solid state devices and this will this will test you know bipolars, FETs, um, similar to the ICO. A lot of similarities between the two. They're pretty much from the same era. Anyway, these are becoming more obsolete now with some of the new equipment. So next we're going to look at some newer equipment um, that'll give us more information and give us more accurate readings for testing devices. That's next. Those other devices are really great for testing, basically giving you a no-go of a transistor device and possibly some gain, but to really find out how the thing's going to operate, you really need a curve tracer. And this one here is the granddaddy of all transistor curve tracers, the Tektronix 575. And what this does, I have that same transistor I tested earlier, on the other devices I have it in this socket and what this allows me to do is apply collector voltages and base steps to this transistor and measure and show how that responds to differing base currents and collector voltages one thing um, you have to be aware of if you use any of these devices is ready kilowatt remember he's always waiting for you to do something wrong and these devices will kill you if you get on the wrong side of them especially this one here this one will go up to 1500 volts so you have to be mindful of what you're doing the newer ones have safety features built in this old one basically didn't I mean you just had to kind of watch what you're doing Here's a switch here. You can apply the the either the left side or the right side to the unit. And as I increase the voltage here, this is a collector volts. Collector volts in the horizontal axis and collector milliamps in the vertical axis. And each one of these lines is a step in base current. So by using this device, and if it's making a good contact here, Okay, there you go. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps. So I'm I'm stepping the base current. In this case, I'm stepping it at 
two microamps per step. So each time I step up two microamps and then the collector current changes. The more base current I drive, the higher the collector current. And the nice thing about this one also is we can um, measure the DC gain of the transistor. Divide the change in collector current over the change in base current gives you your gain. Here's an interesting experiment. I have a, a heat gun here, or a heat device. And transistors, bipolar transistors anyway, not FETs, but bipolars have a problem that if they get hot, their current goes up. So let's see what happens if I put some heat on this transistor. See how the collector current's rising? And what happens is you can get a condition called thermal runaway where the collector current increases, it causes the heat to go up, which causes the collector current to heat more, which causes the temperature to go up more, etc. And um, it's something you have to be wary of. And when you design a transistor circuit, there's ways to, to uh, apply feedback where you can counter that. Another thing about this one here is I can put another transistor in this socket and flip it over to the right and I can actually match two transistors. This socket needs cleaning. I can see that. I wouldn't touch this if uh, if I knew I had high voltage on it, that's for sure. Right now I'm running about 30 volts. The vertical axis right now has half of a milliamp per division and the collector volts in the horizontal position is a half a volt per division. This is the 575 curve tracer. This actually came out in the late 1950s and they made this for many years. This is still, I use this one all the time. You have to be really careful though because it's very easy to burn up components if you're not careful with uh, limit your collector load on here. This is the Tektronix 576 curve tracer. This came out after the 575 and um, there was another one that came out the 577 um, which is over there in the corner. I don't use that one very much. And actually here's a later one. This is the Tektronix 370. This is a uh, this is quite a unit. <clears throat> I use it very seldom, but this will do just about anything you want to do with a semiconductor device. Anyway, back to this one here. Similar to the 575. Okay, as you increase your collector supply, you're going to start to get collector current flowing at different base current steps. So each one of these steps is a step in base current. The nice thing about this one is it has a display here that shows you in the vertical scale it's 200 microamps per division and in the horizontal scale it's 1 volt per division. And also you can read beta per division. And of course the beta would be change in collector current over change in base voltage. This one goes up to 1500 volts. You have to be really careful. This used to have a cover on it that I didn't get. So when I go up to higher voltages, I use the toothpick trick. And there you again, make sure because this guy's always watching you. This one can hurt you. Always, when you put this in the center position, it disconnects the collector voltage. On the right side, it's got a similar connection. You can connect a device here. And the nice thing about it is you can do a AB comparison and you can match transistors. If you get a device that has um, match transistors or sometimes they'll have like a dual transistor that has the same transistor in one package and I have one piece of equipment I'm working on now that it has six leads. It's got two transistors on the same die and um, they do that for stability and uh, matching 
but you can actually do that on a curve tracer you can match two devices so anyway that is uh, another way you can test your transistor so I've tested this same transistor this 2N22A I've tested it on a number of different ways with a number of different devices I'll basically say the same thing you can still get these if you keep your eyes open but stay away from eBay uh, they really gouge people on there. All of these devices I bought is um, they were basically classified as fix or repair because um, if they're working you're not going to touch them at least unless you got some big bucks. So anyway that is the curve tracer. Well as you uh, pursue this hobby you're going to end up with a lot of parts that need testing. Some of these go way back Here's some ger old germanium transistors, in fact, which is the reason vacuum tubes held on for so long. But um, I've got shoe boxes full of these things, and you need a way to test them. So either use your DMM, or if you can get a curve tracer, that's the way to do it. But I uh, have no trouble using used transistors in a circuit, but I always test them um, before I actually use them. Some of these are pretty old. Look at this old, old GE. This one's actually brand new. This one's never been used. These are all old bipolar transistors. That's it for this one. Um, good luck testing your transistors. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.